Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Main Street Church of God in Christ Wednesday night Bible study. Your host, myself, Minister J. O'Neill. I've been given the privilege by our awesome, awesome pastor, Brandon Clay. Pastor, thank you. It's an honor. Uh, we're going to jump right in. We're not going to waste too much time tonight. Um, I'm going to do a little prayer here. Praise God. Blessings to those who are in attendance on tonight. Like and share. Like and share. Father God, we just want to thank you for this opportunity. God, we thank you for your protection. God, we just want to thank you. Thank you for this moment, God, to hear your word and hear from you. God, that we may elevate on tonight, God. Use these lips of clay to your will and let the ears that are listening be. Father God, let something new happen in their lives, inside of them tonight, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. So I'm going to be teaching with the title for the mature posture of prayer. The mature posture of prayer. Amen. Bear with me. And we're going to get through this thing. I don't plan on being before you too long. Amen. It's time for us to move past what, just what God, what we want from God and God do this and God do that to move and to our response to these things that God has done for us already. And God's saying it's time to mature. We're going to be reading from the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6. You can turn with me. Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 through 13. Glory to God. Glory, glory to God. Here we see an answer to a question. And you'll see it better over in Luke's gospel that there was a question asked to Jesus by one of the disciples. And he said, Jesus, teach us to pray. And Jesus gave them a response. Matthew 6, verse 7, it says, And when you pray, do not use vain reputations as the heathens do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father already knows the things you have need of before you ask. And he says in verse 9, he says, in this manner, therefore pray, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. In earth as it is in heaven. Verse 11 says, Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And everybody said, Amen. Now here Jesus gives us the blueprint first it says don't pray like the heathen he said using vain repetition what is he saying a heathen one who does not know God could it be that we got Christians that's praying like they don't even know God he said you come to me but you're praying and you're talking to me as if you don't even know me. He called it vain repetition. How would your natural mother and your natural father feel if every time you came to talk to them, you talk to them as if you don't even know them? How would that make them feel? Vain repetition is indicative of 
a lack of faith. My God. The Bible says that they thought they would be heard for their many words. But notice it didn't say they would be heard for their faith. The Bible says that the just shall live by faith. And I would like to tell you that if faith ain't in it, you can rest assured that God ain't either. I know that's hard for some people to hear, but if faith ain't in it, then God ain't either. The Bible says that the same word that some heard didn't profit them anything. Why? Because they didn't mix it with faith. Then he goes on, he says, after this manner, verse 9, he says, after this manner, manner, a way of doing something. Oftentimes, we don't really pay attention enough to the words we read in the Bible, and so we miss things. But he said, after this manner, which, is, which means it's not necessarily a recital. Now, it's okay to read that as a prayer saying, Father God, we thank you. Let thy will be done in our life. Ain't nothing wrong with that, but God was telling us this is a manner in which you should pray. He said, this is an approach to me. We already heard God say, don't pray to me like the heathen do. So Jesus said, let me give you an approach, a proper approach to God when you're talking to him. Verse 9, it says, our father. Now I'm just breaking down seven, I'm breaking down scriptures 9 all the way through 10. I'm just breaking it down. He says, our father, which means it's patterned after a certain consciousness. Watch this, watch this, y'all. Being fully aware of who you're praying to. Amen. You have to be fully aware who you're praying to. When you talk to your mother, your natural mother or father, and if you didn't know who they were, your language would be different. He says, our father, the father of all, one who has the ability and the power to do the thing you're asking. One whose hand has not waxed short. Come on, somebody. One who does not sleep nor slumber. One whom which all things come from. Come on, y'all. I'm talking about the source. Abba Father. Knowing, watch this, y'all. Knowing that there is no plan B. Your approach to God should be that I'm coming to you, Daddy. And I realize that there is no other way. Yeah. Oftentimes we approach God, but we have another plan in the back of our mind. Just in case what I pray for don't work. What well, I want to tell you something that's the wrong approach to the Father. Verse 9, which art in heaven. What does this tell us? There is a certain location, which means that God is not in a natural place. He's in another dimension, a realm that is not physical. Why is this important? It tells us that this is going to require your faith. You can't approach God and just throw something out there and say, I hope. They said, what they told me. Verse 9, hallowed be thy name. What does this mean? To regard, to regard God's name as holy. You making his name sacred. It's personal to you. Approaching God in a certain way. In the fear of the Lord. In the spirit of reverence. Some of us are too familiar with God. Too familiar. It, it sounds strange if, when I put it like this. How can you be too familiar with an infinite God? If we were honest, most Christians know very little about God. I'm just going to tell y'all the truth. Most Christians know very little about God, but somehow we are very familiar with God. Verse 10, he says, Thy kingdom come in your request. 
We got to stop being petty. Everybody know what that word means? We got to stop being petty in our requests when we come to God. We got to stop praying for foolish things. But our prayer, it, we should say, God, let your kingdom come. We should be in the kingdom mindset. What I mean, the atmosphere, the culture, and the life of heaven. Jesus was telling us we should be praying that these things, these things should superimpose our life. Watch this. Praying that the quality of heaven invades every aspect of our lives. That means you got to put your grocery list up. It's time for maturity, saints. Too familiar with God. Verse 10, thy will be done. In other words, God's kingdoms come, listen to me, when God's will is done. The Bible says, seek thee first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Watch this, watch this, y'all. Or the will of the Father. The will of the Father is the righteousness of the Father. His right way of doing things. And he says, then all of these things will be added. So again, you can put your grocery list up. Seek first the kingdom, his way of doing things. And he said, everything else you need, everything else you desire, everything else you want, it will be added to you. Again, I ask, what have you been praying for? Anywhere, and you can write this down if you want to, anywhere the will of God is allowed to show expression in your life, the kingdom of heaven must come unrestrained. I need to say that again so you can get that. Anywhere the will of God is allowed to show expression in your life, the kingdom of heaven must come unrestrained. It must come. You may write this down. There are no grounds for kingdom support. If the will of the king is not in effect, why are your prayers not being answered? You're not in the will of the king. Verse 10 says, in earth. Notice it said, in earth. King James Version. Not on earth. It's good to compare, this is a side note, it's good to compare and examine scripture. I'm going to throw that out there. It says, in earth, which means this is a location where the kingdom of God should come. In earth, watch this, watch this, y'all, don't miss this, means you being first. Not on earth, in earth, you being first. And then everything else around you. Man of God, what are you talking about? I'm glad you asked. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 7, he says that we are earthen vessels and we have treasure on the inside of us. The Bible says in earth, before it's seen out there, before the manifestation, it must be seen first inside of you. You can't produce what you can't see inside of you. God is looking for something. Verse 11, he says, give us our daily bread. God is more than willing to do th these things for us. But God's greatest desire is for us to experience the fullness of his kingdom. You might write this down. The secret to manifesting the kingdom, power, and glory of God is to know and allow his will to find expression in your life. Let me say that again. The secret to manifesting the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God is to know and allow his will to find expression in your life. But you have to understand what the will of the Father is. Now, in a democracy, it's for the people, by the people, and the government is centered around the people. 
The people decide what happens. And they can argue, they can debate whatever they want to do. That's in a democracy. But in a kingdom, the kingdom is a reflection of the will of the king. In a true kingdom system, your opinion does not matter. Too many saints get mixed up and think that their way or the highway. But in a true kingdom system, your opinion does not matter. This is where we get lost. I thought, I don't feel, it didn't seem, what did God say? You have to trust the kindness of the king. You are called into compliance and into obedience and not negotiation. If you read over in the book of Esther, Queen Vashti, she forgot this. She forgot she was queen to a king. And when the king sent for her, the Bible says that she refused. The Bible says that she rebelled. Why? She forgot that her honor was dependent on the king. She was banished for it. You, and, and if you read, you see that there's no recollection of her ever repenting for what she had done. We must recognize that in a kingdom, everything centers around the king. The question I have tonight was, what kingdom are you of? Are you sure? Can we tell it by looking at your life? Yeah, I'm a Christian, and yeah, I belong here, and yeah, I did this, and I got these accolades. But can we tell by looking at your life? Does your life line up to what the word says it should look like? If the shoe fits, go ahead on and wear it. Religion has had a long hold on many good Christian people. Notice I said good Christian people. Not everybody, not in the perfect, we don't mean they bad people. Good good Christian people. But religion has had a hold on them. John, 20, John 21. John chapter 21. You don't have to turn over if you don't want to. Jesus asked Peter three times. He said, do you love me? Peter said, yes. Then Jesus said, okay, if you love me, feed my sheep. In other words, do what I, the king, requires of you. Then Jesus said, when you were young, you did whatever you wanted to do. Is that right? When you were old, another will carry and guide you. What was he talking about? Maturity. God says it's time to mature, saints. How long? How long must we be at the bottom of the totem pole? Your degree of dependence on the king will tell your degree of maturity. I'm going to say that again. Your degree of dependence on the king will tell your degree of maturity. Maturity says that my life is not just what I desire. Mm, I know some people don't want to hear that. Maturity says my life is not just what I desire. It's not just all about what I want to do. Are you mature? This is why many can experience the true glory and the power of God. Even though they know this is kingdom power, but they can't experience it. Maturity has become a problem. To become an expression of the power and the glory in this kingdom, you must go through a conscious demand. Watch this, what's that conscious demand? To die to oneself and take God's will over yours. Jesus said, Father, if there be any other way, let me know now. But if not, he said, not my will, but yours. What are you putting before God's will? What are you putting before God's will? If you do anything other, I know this is going to be hard, than what the will of the king is, you are a rebel. 
we have many saved rebels. When I'm saved, I received Jesus, yeah, and you became a rebel. One that refuses alliance. One that doesn't agree with what the king says. The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? My God, help me today. Here's a shocker. Here's a shocker, y'all. Most of us are not really walking with God. I know we don't want to hear that. I know it. Most of us are not really walking with God. We're just a product of religious showmanship. We learned how to do this. We learned how to jump and bounce around. And God said, I never even told you to do that. Yes, a part of it. Yes, praise and worship. Yes, these things are a part. He said, but when are you going to start doing my will? What did I ask you to do? Well, I'm doing what sister and brother such and such did. He said, no, what did I tell you to do? You're in complete rebellion, looking busy. We mimic the glory of God, but it's not authentic. How long will the church be at the bottom? The Bible says you have to be dead to enter. He says your body is no longer yours, but a temple of the Holy Ghost. Even though you still have a choice, God says, I desire you. I desire every bit of you. The Holy Spirit was talking to me before I came tonight, and, and, and he reminded me of a song uh, that says, I shall wear a crown when this life is over. God says, that's all good and dandy. He said, but too many Christians are focused on the next life when we haven't completed what we're supposed to do in this life. He said, there's a problem when the next life is pulling on you more than this life you're living in the present. You might want to, but it's right. Go ahead, mother. You might want to write this down. Whatever area in your life that is struggling, yeah, y'all got some struggling, some struggle, stop lying. We see it. We all got some kind of struggle. Listen to me, I'm going to help you. Whatever area in your life that is struggling to show the glory of the king is an area that you are struggling to submit to the king. There's a will, y'all, and it's God's will. Would you agree that it would be unfair for all this to be so and we could know his will? That wouldn't be right. If all this was so, that we should do the will of the Father and we couldn't even know his will. Psalms 143 and 10, you ain't got to turn them and run through it quickly. Psalms 143 and 10 says, teach me to do thy will. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, I know the thoughts I have for you, God says. He says, and peace, not evil. Watch this, God is thinking about you. John 4 and 34, Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of the Father. In other words, he says, I'm satisfied, come on somebody, when I'm doing God's will. Have you been satisfied doing something else? Your satisfaction is in vain. Psalms 40 says, in the volume of the book. Is the will. What, are we, where is, what is the book? The Bible. Where is your Bible? I'm, this, is a, this is a real question. And I'm not being deep with this question. Where is your Bible? The, the physical Bible. Where is it right now? When was the last time you sat down and read your Bible? Yes, I'm cutting you tonight. Where is it right now? Some of y'all got to stop and think, where is my Bible? Oh, Lord, where is it? 
You can't please God. Listen to me. That's if you even care to please God. You can't please God without knowing and understanding his will. God didn't just choose a, a certain number of people, and this, this is a lie. People tell this lie. God didn't just choose a certain number of people and just say, okay, they can have it and, and forget everybody else. No, there are just conditions to this thing. Ephesians 5, Ephesians 5, 16 and 17. Ephesians 5, 16 and 17. He said, don't walk around like fools. He said, but find out what the will of the Father is. If you don't know what the will of the Father is, saint, you're walking around like a fool. How long have you been foolish? Maturity is knocking at your door. Will you answer tonight? Glory to God. He says, some of you have stopped moving years ago. And you stopped and started building and drinking and eating. You got satisfied with the wrong thing. Some of you are really sincere believers. He said, but you're in complete violation. You're doing this and you're doing that, but your work and your life is not in accordance to the will and expectation of the Father. Will you come up higher tonight? Will you come up higher tonight? You might want to write this down. The allowance of Satan's dominion in our lives is to the degree that we are not aligned with the will of God. That's the answer to somebody right there. The allowance of Satan's dominion in our life is to the degree that we are not aligned with the will of God. Get in the will of God tonight. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 8. You ain't got to turn there. But, but he says, it says, he that breaks the hedge will be bitten. Glory to God. Glory to God. I know I'm pulling some things out the hat tonight. That's okay. Because it's maturity time. This is the season for maturity, saints. He says, he that breaks the hedge will be bitten. What is the hedge? Your protection. If your protection is, break, is, is, is broke down, your, it's open season on your life. If I have a shield and it disintegrates, what then can protect me? Notice he said, if, notice he says, he that breaks down. He didn't say if one comes and breaks down. He said, if, he said, he breaks down. It means you yourself. If you break down your hedge, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you. Every time you're not found in alignment with God, Satan has the right to harass you. That's why many saints don't look like what they should. Tied, molested, beat up, deceived, grieved. Every time you're not found in alignment, Satan has the right to harass you. Why? Because you're a rebel. And you have very little protection of the kingdom. The reason I say very little protection and not no protection is because of God's mercy. God, thank you. God, thank you for your mercy. God's mercy has been keeping some of us, but God said it's time to mature. What happened to Job? What happened to Job? Job said, he said, the thing I feared the most has come upon me. What was the issue? Fear. Fear. What did it do? He broke his own hedge. How did fear break the hedge? Why? Because fear is not the will of the Father. 
And I tell you tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost, you shall not fear in this season, my God. How do I know that fear is not the will of the Father and, and man of God, the man of God just ain't throwing something out there. Listen, if you do your research, if you pick up that thing I asked you, that thing I asked you where it was, if you pick that up and read it sometime, you'll find out that fear not is in the Bible over 360 times. How much clearer can you get that God does not want us to fear? He says, I have not given you the spirit of fear. Why? Because I love you. Stop approaching me like I'm some stranger. Oh, dear God, I know that you are one who reaps where you have not sown. You don't even know me. I'm your father. Fear is out of alignment, glory to God. Because you can't faith. My God, you better listen to this. You cannot faith and fear at the same time. Decide which side of the boat you want to be on. We were all designed, and I'm finishing up here. We were all designed for the top because God's kingdom is at the top. But your will won't get us there. There are too many believers whose patterns of life are completely, completely inconsistent with what God has designed for them. When will we mature? I would say to you tonight, as I close, I would say to you tonight, you should repent. My God, you should repent or be happy with the consequence. If you make the decision to stay where you are, to not come up to maturity, not repent, don't complain because God is not hearing you. Repent. I say again, repent. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Tonight you may be watching online and you say, man of God, I want to be a part of this kingdom you talk about. I want to be able to know more about this kingdom you talk about. I want to become a part of the family. Well, all you have to do is make Jesus the Lord of your life. Make him your savior. He died for your sins. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord, then you'll be saved. And that's you tonight. Just repeat after me. Father God, thank you for this opportunity. I repent and I turn from every wrong I've ever done. I want to be better. So I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart, my God. And be Lord of my life. Take my life and do something with it. In Jesus' name, amen. And you just got saved. Glory to God. And if that's you, we want to know about it. If that's you, we want to know about it. Comment in the comment section. We want to know about it. Amen. And if you say, man of God, in the absence of our pastor, man of God, I'm looking for a good church home. Somewhere where I can come, somewhere where I can grow, somewhere where I can get closer to God. 
somewhere I can mature, somewhere I can be told when I'm off and I can get back on. Listen, let me say something. It's not about how many times you fall, but it's your propensity to get back up. Jesus died for each and every last one of us, not for you to fall and stay down on the ground. Get up. If you want to join, again, I believe there should be a link uh, on the screen where you can put your information on there or there will be, or you can come in the coming section and someone will get back to you. Amen. Amen, amen. And we're going to prepare our hearts to give tonight. If you see on the screen, there are some links there. We got different, uh, many different ways of giving. Glory to God. They're just another tool that we have of being able to sow into God's work. Amen. Amen, amen. The Bible says that if you sow sparingly, then you shall also reap sparingly. You cannot believe Genesis 1 and 1 and you don't believe that scripture also. You can't say God, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. I believe that, but you don't believe when the Bible says if you sow sparingly you will reap also sparingly, but if you sow bountifully you shall also reap bountifully. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. And I just want to thank every listener, everyone that has attended tonight, everyone watching online, and those that will be watching at a later time. God bless you, and I'm going to pray us out. Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you for you have given us your word. Thank you for you have brought us up to a better place. God, thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being father to us. Thank you for never leaving or forsaking us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for being who you said you were going to be to us. And Father God, thank you for your protection as we leave this place and we come back again to return. In Jesus' name, everybody be blessed.